In this GD Sync tutorial, we are going to implement player spawning, synchronization, and input management. To start, we want to delete our original player from the scene. Let's add a new player spawner script, which will spawn in players that join the lobby. Let's connect the client joined and client left signals. These are called whenever a player joins or leaves the current lobby. We will use them to spawn and remove players. Both functions give you a client ID. Each player has its own client ID, which is used to identify them. Let's add an extra print when client joined is called for ourselves. You can retrieve your own client ID using get client ID. We can now start spawning in players. Let's get a reference to our player scene so we can instantiate it. Now we need to instantiate a player for each client that joins. Let's name the player using their client ID. This is crucial as GD Sync accesses nodes remotely using their node path. This will ensure the node path matches up on every instance. Let's also assign ownership to the player. GD Sync has an ownership system, which can be very helpful when implementing networking logic. Let's also remove players when they leave the lobby. We can now launch the game and see that both our players spawn in. There is one big issue, however. Both players react to keyboard inputs, not just our own player. Let's head back into the code and make sure only our own player reacts to keyboard inputs. We need to go to the player scene and then the player script. First, let's make sure that the camera is only enabled for our own player. We can do this with a simple ownership check. We can listen for ownership changes using the connect GD sync owner changed function. This allows you to input a callable so you can actively react to ownership changes whenever they occur. Since we set the ownership in the player spawner, this is always triggered. Let's check if we own this node or not. You can check if you have ownership of a node using the isGDSyncOwner function. Now we can simply enable or disable the camera. Next, we need to make sure to disable physics and input detection for all players that are not ours. We only want to run this code for our own player. If we run the game, you can see that we have full control over our own player, while the other player hovers still in the air. Next, we are going to synchronize the position of the other player. This can be done by adding a property synchronizer node to the player scene. The property synchronizer will automatically synchronize properties among clients. Make sure to set the broadcast mode to when owner, as we only want to broadcast our own position to other clients. Next, select the player root as the target node. And finally, add global position to the properties we want to synchronize. We can also enable interpolation, which will smooth out movement. We recommend setting the interpolation speed to the same number as the refresh rate. If we start the game, player positions are synchronized across clients. Next, we need to make sure character animations are synchronized as well. The player uses an animated sprite with an idle and move animation. Let's adjust the script that is controlling it. We need to make sure that we call play both locally and remote. You can call functions on other clients using the call func function. This calls a function on all other clients in the lobby, excluding yourself. We need to input the function we want to call remotely and the parameters enclosed in an array. Let's make sure we also call play locally. Let's replace all the play calls with the new play networked function. GD Sync does not allow you to simply call any function, as that would be unsafe. We need to tell the plugin it can call play remotely. We expose functions to the plugin using expose func. Here, we simply input the function we want to be able to call remotely. Now that the animated sprite is fully synchronized, we must also synchronize the animation player. This animation player contains the death and respawn animation. These animations are called using the died and spawned signals on the player. We can easily synchronize these animations by swapping the animation player for a synchronized animation player. Doing this will break the connected signals, so we have to re-input the bound parameters as shown.
Finally, let's make sure enemies can only kill our own local player. If we run the project, we can see that both the position and walk animations are fully synchronized. Death and respawn animations work as well using the synchronized animation player. Lastly, we need to make sure audio is synchronized as well. We will give the audio script the same treatment as the animated sprite. Here we will also synchronize the pitch scale. Variables can manually be synchronized using the sync var function. We need to make sure to expose the pitch scale variable to the plugin as well. This concludes the second tutorial. In the next tutorial, we will be looking at how to easily instantiate nodes and how to synchronize them. Thank you for watching and choosing GD Sync. See you all in the next video.